Hello. Hello. Good to see you. And you. Good to see you. Um, now, you're a GP uh, with a special interest in allergies. So you talk a lot and you speak a lot to people that uh, might be uh, worried and anxious and concerned about allergies in general. But specifically today, we're going to talk about these. Yes. So these are these are um, I mean, some people call them just the EpiPen, which is just one brand of the three. Some people call them auto injectors. Some people call them adrenaline injectors. Some call, people call them AAIs. But basically, they're all the same, aren't they? They are pretty much. I mean, all of them contain basically a needle, a spring and some adrenaline in a vial. Um, and I think that's important because people often ask me, you know, what if the battery runs out or something like that? But they they are mechanical devices. They're not things that need charging or a Bluetooth right. connection or anything else. So you just need to carry. I mean, we say two of these, two of all, you know, not all three. But if you're prescribed one of each, you should really be carrying two, shouldn't you? Yeah, absolutely. I think there are a number of reasons for that. Sometimes very, very, very rarely. I mean, you know, incredibly rarely devices don't work. But I think the main reason is because in the heat of the moment, we can get it wrong. You know, we could right. with our first injection, we might miss or somebody who's trying to help us might end up injecting themselves rather than than you. And the other reason is that sometimes people do need a second injection. So, you know, if after five minutes, the symptoms aren't improving after the first injection, a second can can be given. Um, so there's all, all these reasons why two pens should always be carried together. We shouldn't just rely on, on having one. And again, when you prescribe, can you can you mix them up? Do you, you know, could you carry one of these, one of these or one of these, one of these? Or normally would you have, you know, two jets, two epi or epi pens or two emeraids? Would you have one of each? Yeah, I, I think it's really important to try and have two the same. Right. And the main reason for that is though these devices are very similar in how they work, how they are given differs a little bit with each device. And I think we already have confusion about with people who are on one, you know, if they're given a, a Jext one time and then they're given an Emirate the next time and the pharmacist might run through it with them and they say, oh, well, actually, this is now five seconds to hold it in place. And previously it was 10 seconds and they get, you know, it can get a bit confusing. So if you have mm -hmm. two different devices that have different lengths of time that they should be held in place, I think that's going to be difficult. So yeah, but, unless it is a real, you know, unless there's a real sort of paucity of supply where you're getting them from, it really should be two devices exactly the same. We'll run through in a minute or you can show me how you use these things uh, in a moment, because like, yeah, if they are all different. Um, but what I mean, when would you use it? I mean, is, is it the fact that somebody might have a you know, a reaction going to anaphylaxis or or somebody might think that they're going and they're just a bit sweaty or a bit clammy or, you know, are they choking? Are they, do they collapse? What? When do, when do you give it? I think that's probably the most important question with these. And I, my experience has been often that when people are given these injectors, um, especially if they've been given it through an A&E department or, or by their GP, that they may not be given clear instruction on when it should be used. Mm. And that can cause a lot of concern and it can be quite frightening because it's like, well, at what point? So what I always say to people is, is a couple of things. One, you are never going to harm yourself by giving this. You know, it is filled with adrenaline. We make adrenaline in our bodies. We release it from our adrenal glands. It's there in our bodies all the time. So all we're doing is we're topping up the adrenaline in our bodies. We're not going to cause harm to ourselves or to a loved one if we give the injection. The second thing about exactly when to give it, there isn't really a, a sort of wrong time to give it. And we would always want it to be given earlier rather than later. But the way I tend to talk to patients about it and the way we tend to discuss it is to say if there is a reaction that is affecting the outside of your body so if um, I've eaten something I'm allergic to and I might have a bit of tingling in my lips for example mm -hmm. or I might get a bit of itching of my skin but I'm, I'm you know otherwise I'm not feeling unwell at all I'm feeling okay then you know that and it doesn't progress and I'm just keeping an eye on how I feel I wouldn't have any concerns about giving 
my adrenaline injector at that stage, I might take an antihistamine. However, if the reaction is starting to affect the inside of the body, so if, for example, I am feeling lightheaded and dizzy as if I might faint, if I'm feeling very concerned and panicky for, for some reason, if I had cramping tummy pains, if I got wheezy in my chest, if I was feeling the inside of my throat sort of lower down, felt like it was closing up and it might affect my breathing, anything that seems to be going on inside the body rather than on the sort of visible outside of the body, that's where I would probably say, right, it's time to give the pen. Right, right. And if you're with somebody, <clears throat> and, you, and it, would you initially you'd feel that tingling in your lips, perhaps, and then it would progress on to uh, 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 something more serious, that that kind of feeling of choking or tightening in the in the uh, in the throat. I think it would be it would be so lovely if it always did exactly the same thing in everyone, but it, it, unfortunately, it doesn't. And things can, you know, they can progress in a very sequential way like that. But at the same time, you can also have reactions that just suddenly start affecting, you know, suddenly causing wheeze, for example, and difficulty in breathing as the first symptom. So I would always say to people, don't wait to give it. If you are thinking, I think I might need my injector, then you already know it's time to give it. So it can come on quite quickly then? Absolutely, yeah. So the sooner the better. So get it out of wherever you're carrying it, your pocket, whatever, just get it ready. And then if you think you need it, you actually do need it. That's generally what I would say to people, again, stressing that even though they are injecting something into their body, what they are injecting is something their body already has. So they're just giving themselves a top up of it. So if, if you don't, I mean, if you don't you know, actually need it, it's no harm in you yeah, having it absolutely. anyway. I right. think the crucial thing we want to avoid is is for people to either delay giving it. And we we know through research that it's very, very common for the administration of these injectors to be delayed in, in people. Um, and we also want them to be confident and, and comfortable in how not only how they use it, but when they use it. Right, right. So once it's out, I mean, we're going to do some videos separately, Dolly. You're going to do some videos yeah. separately, aren't you? Some uh, on how to e use each one individually, yeah. which is, uh, you know, which is really, really good. And we're going to put links to that on this um, video somehow in the in the magic way that uh, that that sort of thing happens. Um, but we've got some trainer pens here. I mean, I've just picked this this um, the one with the yellow top, the Jext. Yeah. There we are. Random, yeah. ran, ran, just by ran, randomly. Now, but like, let, let's talk through it. So you, you, you're wheezing, you're not feeling too good at all. You're perhaps feeling a bit faint. Your friend's propping you up or whoever you're with propping you up. You know, obviously they're concerned. They might be patting you on the back thinking that you're choking. You might be leaning up. Is it then that you give the adrenaline pen? Yeah, so I think there's a few things in, in what you've, you've said. I mean, the first thing, if you're feeling faint and dizzy, you ideally want to be lying down. And wherever possible, we want people to be lying down, preferably with their legs up. So I think um, you guys have got some some pictures to sort of demonstrate we that. Um, so, but that. So that's the ideal. However, if you're feeling very tight in the chest, if you're having some difficulty breathing, often lying down, can make that feel a little bit worse. So it may be that what you want to do is to be sitting down, but sitting up slightly to help the breathing. So you have to kind of balance the position of what you what makes you feel a bit more comfortable. The crucial thing is we don't want you standing up and walking around if you're feeling faint, dizzy, wheezy, those kind of things. We want you to stop in place where you are. And Why is that sit. though, Matt? Why is that? Because what we don't want to do is add you know, a, a collapse. So if somebody faints, because in if you're having an allergic reaction, your blood pressure often can drop. And that means that the heart's trying to pump blood up to the brain to keep you nice and alert and awake. And it's fighting gravity. But if the pressure at which that blood is being pumped up starts to go down, you might find that you start feeling even more faint and dizzy and woozy and unsteady. And if you then fall over, you know, particularly if you're out and about or mm -hmm. near a flight of stairs, you know, gosh, we don't want that at all. So the best thing to do if you start feeling faint and dizzy, stop where you are, sit down, 
lie down if you can. If you're very tight in the chest and lying down makes your breathing worse, sitting up a little bit will help that. But the ideal posture is lying flat on your back with your legs elevated. Now, the reason for the legs elevated is, of course, you've got loads of blood in your legs. And if you put them up when your heart is lower down, gravity is going to carry that blood back to the main important parts of the body, heart, lungs, brain, etc. So we want you in that position. Now, you mentioned about having a friend with you. I mean, having a friend with you is ideal because you've got someone there who can help you with administering the pen, could give the, the injection for you. You've also got someone who can call for help. And I think that's another important first thing. If you're going to give your adrenaline injector, you need to call 999 and tell them that you are having an anaphylactic attack. Don't worry if you're not sure if you are or not. We can work that out later, whether it was anaphylaxis. It probably is. You're going to give your pen. They will send an ambulance. One of the important reasons for that is you're about to use one of your crucial two pens and you need to have it resupplied, So, which obviously an emergency department can do. We don't want you then only with one pen because sometimes reactions can, even after you've recovered a bit, very rarely, they can just come back a little bit afterwards. So you might need a later injection. So all kinds of aspects to the scenario you've you've said there. I think the ideal is you're feeling faint and dizzy. You think you might be having an allergic reaction, whether it's to you know a food you've eaten or to a bee sting or whatever it might be. We want you lying down. We want the legs up if possible. We want you sitting up a little bit if the breathing is a problem because that will help you with your breathing. And we want the adrenaline injector to be given as soon as you can, either with the help of friends or by yourself. So once you're on your, I mean, you're, you're lying down, you're lying on your back with your knees, you're not in a recovery position. No, you're lying on your back, legs up, feet on a chair or something like that, if you can manage it, just to help that blood get back into the main part of the body. Um, and that's a good position to be in. Right. So then we get we, we we've got what we got here the the jext. The jext, yeah. What do we what do we then do or what what do we I, we do it either to ourselves or or the friend or Absolutely. the mum or dad or whoever's there. So yeah. what do what do they do? Let's take quickly one of these in turn. Yeah. So this this pen is very similar to the EpiPen. So if I put the two side by side, both mm. of them have a cap at one end, yellow on the jext and blue on the EpiPen. And they've got the point at which the needle will come out, which is black on the jext at the top and orange on the EpiPen. Both of them have got instructions on how to use, but ideally we don't want people to have to read instructions because in the heat of the moment, you know, we, we really panic. The way to look at it is, you know, if you suddenly need to phone somebody in an emergency, you don't have to work out how to use your phone. You know how to use your phone because you use it all the time and i think that's where these trainer pens are so useful and i i always stress to people to get hold of the trainer pens the company send them out for free because they're so good to practice so the pens you and i have at the moment don't have needles in them and therefore we can use them to to sort of demonstrate or for people to play with so in this you've got a needle You've got a spring and you've got some adrenaline in a vial and that all sits in this part of the device. The needle's going to come out of the pointy end. And there is a safety cap here. If I try and inject my hand with it with the safety cap on, I can't. It's nothing's happening. I have mm -hmm. to remove this cap by pulling it off before wow. the pen is now ready to inject. Now, I always say to people when they're handling these devices, the best thing to do is to hold it in your fist so right. that both ends stick out from either side of your hand. The reason for that is in the heat of the moment, if people get, you know, if they think, oh gosh, which end is it? They might take this off. You can see there's a little hole there yeah. and they might mm -hmm. think, oh, that's where the needle is going to come out and then put their finger onto the button. And uh, push. At which right. point, of course, you're going to inject your thumb. Now, that's not particularly comfortable. It's not going to be the end of the world, but it's a waste of the device. Nice. The medicine's mm -hmm. gone into the wrong place. We're going to inject this into a muscle. OK, it's it's new. we're not going to try and find a vein or something like that. This is a, a injection into a muscle. And the best muscle we have for that is our thigh. So it's a great big muscle sitting at the front of the thigh. 
and therefore anywhere we inject in approximately the right area, we're going to get this into the right place. Now, it's difficult to um, demonstrate sitting down, but essentially if I stand up, and apologies for this. Okay, that's so great. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll put my leg up in a, oh, yeah. in a so visible position. Yeah. Um, we're going to the go to the outside edge here of the right. And when you push on it, you can feel the muscle under the skin. So if I'm doing it, I'm again, I'm holding it with my fist, so I'm exposing either end. I'm removing the safety cap, taking that off. And then I'm going to put it in the position. Historically, we often said to people, swing it in, but there's lots of problems with that. You can skip off the surface, you can miss, you can get it in the, you know, the wrong place. It doesn't matter if you're pretty much in that area. So what we would now say to people is to put it in place and then press or push hard. And you do have to press or push hard. The device is going to tell you when it's injecting because you will feel the tiny uh, scratch of the needle and it is a tiny scratch. When so it's not a is it? I mean, some people ask it. You know, is it a long needle? Is it going to hurt? Is it like yeah. an injection? You know, it, but it's so thin. It's so incredibly it's thin. So if you've if you've been recently and had a blood test with your doctor, we're mm -hmm. talking about a needle much much thinner and smaller than that. So these needles are so incredibly thin and tiny. They're quite. They have a, enough of a length that they can get into the muscle and even get through an item of clothing like your trousers or something like that. But they are very, very sharp and very, very small. If you put those two things together, what that means is you are not going to really feel it. It is not going to be a horribly painful thing to do. And I think when you talk to people who've had to do it, I have a, um, um, a patient who's only 14 and she's sadly had to give herself her pen a number of times because of reactions and everyone's in awe of her her teachers are completely in awe because when they first had to do it for her they were panicking about doing it and she basically said to them oh you know give it here i'll do it and she she gave it to herself and what she said to me is she hardly feels it she doesn't really feel it go in there's a little scratch on the skin but nothing major at all so I'll, I'll stand up again and get my leg back into view. So basically, we're once again, we're holding it with our fist. We're taking the end off so that we know it's ready to go. We're placing it in position and then we are pushing or pressing hard. Now, you probably heard that clip. Heard clip the trainer, yeah, I heard the clip. Pen. But the thing is, we're not done yet because the adrenaline needs to be delivered from the device and it's not going to come in in a split second. So once we hear that, once we know that the needle is going in, we have to hold it in place for the right period of time. Now, that's where these pens differ. And that's where I think it's very important to know which device you have and to know, you know, certainly we, we talked earlier about having two different pens, you know, it's so important to know which one is which. This Jext pen, the advice says on it to hold it in place for 10 seconds. So you're just counting slowly to 10 whilst you keep the pressure on and allow the adrenaline to be delivered. The other pens are either three seconds or five seconds. And I think we're probably going to talk about the other the other pens in turn. But very important that you know which period of time your pen should be held in place for. It does say on the device there are instructions and it does say very clearly in bold lettering how long it should be held in place for. But Once presumably get, if you've got sorry carry on um, if, if you've got if you've say if you're you're being prescribed two jacks or two epi pens or, yeah. you know if you've got two of you only need to remember you know i've got to put that one in for three seconds i've got to put the other one in for five i've got to put the other yeah. one in for, you don't need necessarily at that time i mean it's helpful in case you know one of your friends has, has got a different uh yeah. adrenaline pen but uh for, for your own purposes you just need to remember right that's that's what i need to do absolutely yeah it's just remembering how long your pen should be held in place and you know either count it yourself get somebody to count it for you you know if somebody's there helping you um, I think calling for help if you're going to give a pen is very important if you're on your own I think that's if you're able to I think that's really really crucial um, but it's knowing the length of time now let's say you got it wrong let's say you thought it was 
five seconds and it's actually 10 seconds, what's going to happen? Well, you're probably going to get a little bit less of the adrenaline. The adrenaline is still going to, there's still going to be some in your body, it's still going to work, but ideally you want to allow the pen to deliver the whole dose of adrenaline so that it can do its work and start making you feel better and stop the reaction. Let, let's talk about the other two. Yeah, um, you've got you've got the uh, the EpiPen here. Yep. And, um, but that's got that's got a blue lid as opposed to a, a yellow lid. Yeah, absolutely. I think what, what people often say is a mnemonic for this one is blue to the sky. So that sort of tells you which way to to hold the pen. Um, I mean, you could adopt the same by saying yellow to the sun, you know, if you wanted a mnemonic that would work for Jext. Um, but essentially, it's a very, very similar looking device. It has a cap that can come off at the top. So you can pull that off without that being removed. The pen won't fire. You want to hold it again, you know, with your fingers away from either end. And again, the technique, the position is exactly the same. The only difference between these two pens is whilst the Jext pen says 10 seconds, the EpiPen says three seconds. So this one delivers the adrenaline a little bit quicker. It's no better. They're both equivalent devices. Um, they just have slightly different time frames that when the companies have looked at how these pens work in, in studies, they've given the best advice on how long that particular device should be used to be held in place for. Is, it, is, is that to do with the mechanism or the spring or whatever is in, inside? Yeah, it's abs- nothing, nothing abs- to do with the strength of the, no, absolutely the adrenaline not. or... And it does sometimes confuse because most pens have the same dosages. So we have a 150 pen for children under 25 kilos in weight. We've got the 300 um, microgram dose pen, which is for adults. And one of the manufacturers, Emirate, makes a 500 microgram dose pen. And that, I think, sometimes causes confusion. But it's more about the the way the adrenaline is delivered by each device they are different devices they have slight differences in how the adrenaline gets into the body so they're all at the end of the day pretty equivalent whichever one right. you have right and then with the final one here the emirade yeah so emirade uh, slightly this is, this is the one that's slightly different so it's uh, a little bit thinner um it doesn't have a, a sort of bit at each end so with the Emirate pen, there's just a smooth continuation of the case at the top. Um, it has a cap here, which you can just pull off. So I would pull that off. And that makes it, I think, quite clear with this pen where the action is going to happen from, because it only has one end. So you know that's where things are going to happen from. But again, it, exactly the same thing. It's not going to fire with the cap in place. You take the cap off, and then you are going to do exactly the same thing. With Emirate, we are talking about five seconds. So in in order, they are the the one that's this is EpiPen is three seconds, Emirate is five seconds, Jext is ten seconds, and that's the manufacturer's current guidance for these devices. Whichever one you have, the, they they are all going to work. I think it's important that it's when people, if, especially if somebody has had a, a particular pen for a while and they go to get their repeat prescription because their pens have run out, they've gone out of date, the, and they're given something different, these pens are all equally effective. They are all going to deliver adrenaline in exactly the same way, and they're all going to help stop the reaction. And always in the thigh, just bet- if you're wearing trousers, just beneath where the pocket is, really, isn't it? Yeah. And it doesn't matter if you're, you know, you're um, you're carrying a bit of weight like me, maybe, or you're you're, you're slimmer or fitter or muscular, yeah. or it doesn't matter about your body type, does it? Same, no. same place. Same place in in all cases. Um, you know, it, we we do if if you can't remove. You know, if you've got your trousers on and you've mm. just got to go for it, you can go through the trousers. In an ideal world, particularly if you're wearing very, very thick material, if you're wearing a brand new pair of jeans or something like that, and you can sort of pull them down if you've got the ability to do that. But if you're, say, you know, in the middle of a restaurant or something like that, and you really don't want to pull your trousers down, you just go for it through the trousers, I think would be the important thing. What we don't want to do is we don't want to delay. We want it to be done as, as quickly as possible because we want things to to take effect as fast as we can. 
And once, once you've administered, how long then do you, would you kind of leave it before having to stand up and you think that you feel, you, do you just feel better? You feel a bit more? Yeah, I, I, I think people do feel better. They, they feel the effects of these injections very, very quickly. You know, people start to feel it within a minute or so. They will start to, to feel the effects. It's very fast to act. But what I would not do, especially if you've been, if we take our person who's been feeling faint and dizzy and we've we've laid them down, we've called for help, we've, we've got an ambulance on the way, the pen has been given, they've got their legs elevated to make them feel a little less faint. We don't want them to suddenly stand up just after their pen's given because right. it, they may still feel quite faint and woozy and they may not realize that until they stand up and then we're back to somebody who might you know keel over and hit their head or or injure themselves in some way so i think the best thing to do until help has arrived until they can check you over is just to stay in place stay lying down don't suddenly leap up and try and go on with your day how long would you then leave it until you, you then think actually I, I need the second one so we, we've said that it, it takes effect very quickly, but at the same time, you're then in basically like a battle between the reaction that the allergen has caused your body and the healing effects of the adrenaline. So those two things are, are now kind of balancing against each other. And it may be after the first injection that you start to think, oh, I'm feeling better. And then a few minutes later, you're thinking, hang on a minute, I'm, I'm feeling worse again. Or you feel after the first injection, this hasn't made me feel better. Now, I think if within, you know, if you looked at a, a simple time frame, like a five minute period, if after the first injection, you're not feeling better, but things aren't getting worse, I think it's reasonable to wait a few minutes, but only a few minutes before you make a decision as to, am I going to give a second injection? If you get your first injection and that seems to have a really good and quick effect and you start thinking, well, that's great, that's worked, I'm feeling a bit better, you still want to be aware that you might not feel better for the, you know, completely and things might start, you know, that balance, that battle between the adrenaline and the allergen, the allergen might get control back again and your symptoms might start to, to resurface. Now, if that's the case, you really want to put that time frame of, of kind of five minutes and giving your second injection, um, right. in, in my opinion. Um, which brings us on to the, the question of where do we give a second injection, um, which I know is something you, you wanted to raise. Um, and there's been a lot of discussion about this. Do you give it in the same place or do you give it in the other leg? And I nice. think, yeah, nice. I think we'd probably say, if possible, if you're going to give the second injection, go for the other leg. Now, there's reasons for that. One, you've already had an injection in the first leg and the adrenaline can cause blood vessels to constrict. So if blood vessels have constricted, they're not going to carry so much blood. They're not going to carry so much adrenaline through them. The other leg is going to be less affected from that point of view. So I think if there's a second injection to be given, two injections, two legs, one in one, one in the other. So always use the other leg for the second injection if possible. And it, <clears throat> by this time you've got an ambulance on its way. Yeah. Ideally the ambulance has arrived, but you know, you, you, you might be feeling, I'm okay actually, you know, I, I'm feeling fine now. Should you phone the ambulance and say, look, don't bother guys, uh, you know, I know you're busy, I'm feeling okay now, I've had my adrenaline and I'm fine or let them arrive? Um, I think it's important to let them arrive and I think it's very important to let them assess and and do what they need to do. So a few reasons for that. The first reason is you've let's say you've given your two pens and you're feeling much much better. If you were allergic to something like for example um, a let's say a wasp and you've given your two pens because you've had an allergic reaction to a wasp. It's the height of late summer. There's loads of wasps around. It would be quite concerning if you've used up your two pens. You call the ambulance. I'm much better. You don't need to come. And then 10 minutes later, you get stung again. Now, we don't know that you're going to have another severe reaction to another sting, but suddenly you're in a position where you've just been stung and you now don't have any pens left. So really important, the, the fastest way to get replacement pens is, is by being seen at the hospital. 
So that's very important. The other thing which is less common, but it does happen, is what we call biphasic reaction, a two stage reaction. So you treat the immediate reaction, you give your adrenaline, you start to feel better. But then sometimes even hours later, the reaction can come back. Now, it's not entirely clear why this happens, but it, and it is unusual. It's thought that particularly with food allergens, you know, we might have still a little bit of that allergenic protein floating around in our guts that hasn't quite been broken down yet. But the reaction can suddenly come back without you realizing it. People who have been in this situation, who've gone to hospital, they're often asked to eat before they leave. They're often told to, can you, can you have something, a sandwich or something like that before they leave? And they're often given some food and drink before they go. And that's part of the reason is because we know these rare biphasic, these sort of recurring reactions can happen later on. And so they would always observe you in hospital for a few hours just to make sure everything's fine. They'd give you something to eat to try and, you know, flush through what's in your stomach, so on and so forth. So I think very, very important in all circumstances, if you've had to give your pen, whether it's one or two, that you should go to the hospital, just be observed for a bit before you're sort of going home and heading off. Great, great. Matt, I think we've covered everything, haven't we? I think uh, there's an awful lot to learn there, um, but really, really valuable. I mean, it, it, it can be very confusing for folks. I mean, it, it's obviously a very frightening experience, yeah. particularly the fir first time. So, you know, you could be a bit panic panicked. And um, certainly if you're with somebody who's having a reaction, you know, and, and it's it's not something that happens every day, you're going to be really panicked. So it's important to get hold of these pens. And we're going to put a, a link again, somehow magically uh, associated with this video uh, to the to the manufacturers that people th can uh, can get hold of these. And so it's just very important to be familiar with how to use them, where to place them, which end, you know, it can be confusing. You're not going to inject yourself in the, in the thumb and, you know, which way it goes in. Um, just to get familiar with it so that it, it just becomes every day. Yeah. Um, but the most important thing, of course, is to carry one with you, carry two with you at all times. Absolutely right. And I think with your, you're absolutely right to mention the, the websites. These are really helpful. And I think it's worth mentioning also all the pen manufacturers have their own smartphone app. And you can do all kinds of things like look at videos of how to give the device. You can use the app to record the serial numbers of the pens that you have, because then it will send you reminders when they're going to expire. And that's super helpful because often we we suddenly look at our pen and we think, oh my goodness, it, it it's expired. Um, and that could presumably you're only prescribed one every what every few months, if not. Well, it's it's really longer, isn't it? So you you're the, the, from the time the pen's made, of course, it's then shipped out to a, a storage you know uh, it, it's shipped to the pharmacy it sits on the pharmacy's shelf for a while so by the time you get the pen a right. lot of shelf life may have already been eaten up I so see. it's always important to look at the expiry dates which are very clear on the side of the pen but if you put the serial number which again is clear on the side of the pen into whichever app it is so for epipen into the epipen app yeah they will sort of text you and say your pen is is going to run out in a month you need to get more from your gp and i think that's very very helpful it's a helpful reminder yeah matt great thank you very much indeed pleasure thank you very much indeed. now you're going to do these three other videos separately to yeah. this but uh, i think Absolutely. there's a as, a as a you know this this is so valuable to know and um and very helpful for everybody so i can't thank you enough pleasure great see you soon